In this section, we're going to look at an application of the greatest common factor known as factor by grouping. So, in order to complete this section, you want to be able to understand how the greatest common how to find the greatest common factor. You also need to be able to divide monomials. So, factor by grouping when we looked at systems of equations, we saw that we could not only plug in numbers to an equation, we could plug in expressions. In the previous section, we saw that the GCF can include variables as well as numbers. In this section, we combine the two basic ideas into one. Not only can we factor out numbers and variables, we can factor out a common expression, here a binomial. So let's talk about extending the concept of greatest common factor. Not only can the greatest common factor be a number or a number with variables, but you can also use it as a common expression. So what we want to do is, for instance, on example A, we want to pretend that this here is one term and this is another term. And what do they have in common? Well, what they have in common is they both have an x plus 3. So we can factor that out. Just like we did before, I want to put my common factor, my greatest common factor on the outside. We said x plus 3. And inside, I want to put each term without the common factor. So in the first term, if I get rid of the common factor x plus 3, what am I left with? I am left with x squared. In the second term, if I get rid of the x plus 3 because I factored it out, what am I left with? I am left with plus 5. And we're done. Let's look at example B. Same idea. I want to treat this is one term, and this is another term. What do they have in common? They have a y plus 1 in common. So I'm going to factor out my y plus 1. That's my greatest common factor. I'm going to write that on the outside of a set of parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I want to write each term after we divide by the y plus 1 or after we get rid of the y plus 1. So the first term, x times y plus 1, if I get rid of y plus 1, I am just left with x. In the second term, minus 2 times y plus 1, if we get rid of the y plus 1, we are left with minus 2. And you're done. So these are just some base case examples. Factor by grouping, we're going to add a couple more steps onto this. Okay, so let's look at what factor by grouping is going to be. One of the first things I do want to point out about factor by grouping is it's the only thing that we have that has four terms. If it has four, if your polynomial has four terms, you want to be thinking factor by grouping. So what we're going to do is we want to look at an example, and I'm going to go through each one of our steps here as we work through this example. So the first step, group the first two terms together and the last two terms together using parentheses. So I want to group my first two together and my last two together. We'll come back to this rule about the middle sign being negative. From here, we want to factor out the GCF for each group, just like we did in the previous section. So the first set, if we have x cubed and 4x squared, they don't have any numbers that I can factor out, but they do have an x squared. So if we factor out x squared, what are we left with? Well, x cubed divided by x squared is just x, and 4x squared divided by x squared is 4. That takes care of the first set. Let's look at the second set. What can we factor out? 3x and 12, start with 3 and 12. 3 and 12 are both divisible by 3, so that can be factored out. 
I can't factor out any x's because the second term has no x's. So if we divide both terms by 3, I am left with x plus 4. And now we're back to what we saw on the previous slide. We can go ahead and pretend that this is one thing, this is another, and now they have an x plus 4 in common. So I'm going to factor out my x plus 4. I'm going to put it outside a set of parentheses. And inside, I'm going to put the result of getting rid of x plus 4 from each one of my terms. So we get x squared plus 3. And we're done. OK, let's look at a second example. We have. Again, we want to start by grouping the first two terms together. Now, we do need to be careful here because we have that our middle sign is negative. We want to change the signs inside the second set. No, we are factoring out a negative, essentially. We can't just go willy-nilly putting, putting parentheses wherever we want without making sure that we take care of what we need to. So when we are factoring out a negative, Remember that we do need to divide each term by the negative. So what we're going to do is group the first two together. We get xy minus 3x minus, and here's where we do need to be careful. We need to make sure that we change this to a minus 15, because by putting in the parentheses there, I'm basically factoring out the negative we need to divide each term by negative. That's a minus 15. OK, so the first set. Now we can go ahead and factor out our greatest common factor. For the first set, note that they both have an x. So I'm going to go ahead and write that outside my parentheses. Inside, I am left with, for the first term, xy. If I take away the x, I'm left with y. Second term, if I take away the x, I'm left with minus 3. For the second set, both, fact, both numbers, both terms, are divisible by 5. So we can factor out a 5, and we are left with y. 5y divided by 5 is y. Minus 15 divided by 5 is 3. Now, if you do this correctly, you should get that your binomial is the same. If you did not get the same binomial, then either you did something wrong or it doesn't factor using factor by grouping. So now we're going to treat x times y minus 3 as one term. We're going to treat minus 5 times y minus 3 as a second term. We can factor out our common factor of y minus 3. Inside, the first term, if we get rid of the y minus 3, I'm just left with x. Second term, if we get rid of the y minus 3, I'm left with minus 5. And we're done. Let's look at one more example involving this negative just to make sure that we understand it. So um, I'm going to start by grouping my first two terms together and my last two terms together. We do have the middle sign as negative, so we want to change the signs inside the second set. So my first set, I'm just going to put parentheses around it. So we have xy plus 7y minus, when I put my parentheses here, I do need to make sure that I am distributing out the negative, so I'm going to have x plus 7. OK, so now the first set, what can we factor out? Well, they both have a y in common, so I can factor a y out, and I am left with x plus 7. Minus the second set, nothing cancels out, nothing factors out. They have no common factors, and so you can leave this as x plus 7. But note that technically there is a 1 in front here. Why? Because when you have minus x, that's technically minus 1x. If you have minus y, it's technically minus 1y. Same thing here. Minus x plus 7 is technically minus 1 
x plus 7. So now we're to our factor by grouping step. We want to factor out the common binomial factor. So if we treat this as one term, And this, as our second term, we can factor out the x plus 7. Inside my parentheses, I want to write what's left over. Well, in the first term, if we get rid of x plus 7, we're just left with y. And in the second term, if we get rid of x plus 7, whether you choose to write the 1 there or not, you do need to remember that we need two terms inside our second set. So we do need y minus, and anything divided by itself is 1. That's one of the reasons that I encourage you to write the 1 there, so that when you factor out, you are left with something easily recognizable. Go ahead and try the following problems on your own. Bring your answers as well as any questions that you have to class.